So this question says, uh, crossbow is aimed horizontally. Uh, let me start doodling because <laughs> that's my way of making sure that I, um, I getting all the information that uh, uh, pre presented in the question. So it says it's aimed horizontally. So my initial velocity is going to be horizontal. And it's telling me how far away the target is. It's, um, distance d and it says the arrow hits 30 centimeter below the spot at which it was aimed so i think what it means is so this is the spot where it was aimed let's say y is equal to zero here and where it actually hit after traveling this distance is somewhere here so um, it said y equals let me put in the sign here since it says below i'm just gonna say y is equal to minus 0 0.3 meter i'm also taking care of direction and putting in the unit and it asks what is the initial velocity of the arrow okay um so there's a standard approach to any projectile motion question it kind of doesn't almost doesn't matter uh, what question the question is asking almost uh, every single projectile motion question, what I would start out with is uh, breaking the motion into horizontal and the vertical components. Even though in this question, it might sound like there's only horizontal component of motion, the thing is in projectile motion, because of that downward acceleration at G, um, you are going to get vertical motion. So even when you had no initial velocity in the vertical component, you are going to have vertical motion. So. Um, it's good to get yourself in that mindset. You have two independent of um, directions of motion that you have to deal with. So, um, so once you are setting things up that way, I find it useful to write down some equations describing motion in these two directions. So in the x direction, um, as a function of time, it's going to be troubling at this initial and also average velocity in the x direction times time and I'm just going to send my uh, uh, I'm going to send my uh, x initial to be zero where it starts and that's why I don't have to deal with that and there's no acceleration in the x direction and you t look at this equation and see how you can relate to maybe information that's given in the question then you see hmm so the distance that it travels by the time uh, let me call this one a t final so when it hits the target, it's my T final, or, or you know, it is final after it hits, it's no longer in projectile motion. So my X position at that time, D, is going to be equal to initial X speed times my T final. So this is an unknown quantity that, um, that I need to somehow need to get a handle on. And, you know, strictly speaking, I also don't know this. And, uh, <laughs> but since I'm going to be solving for it, uh, I guess, uh, well, well, okay, they are both unknowns. So right now I have one equation and one, two unknowns, which means I need at least one more equation so that I can try to get some handle on this other unknown, the time information. And when you are analyzing projectile motion, the most common place where the time information will come from is the y component of motion. So you have two different equations that you could write for the y component of motion. One of them would be the position. Um, so you have position change coming from the acceleration, minus one half gt squared. And normally there would be initial y component of velocity plus initial y position. Both of those are zero. Um, so I'm setting my axis so that the initial um, position of the arrow is zero. And uh, the way it's fired, it has no y component of velocity, so that's a zero. So I have that. And the other equation, it doesn't turn out to be useful in this question, but sometimes it can be useful, is the one that describes the y component of velocity that's given by initial um, 
uh, y component of velocity minus gt for the projectile motion. Uh, here, this is not useful because when it strikes the target, you don't know the y component of velocity anyway. So let me just scratch out. So this, I can see that, oh, I can relate to this y final they've given us. So I can say at the t final is the y final. Um, let me just, so, uh, so this is my second equation. And uh, in writing down the second equation, I didn't have to introduce any new unknowns. This is given quantity, t final, it's unknown, but it was already here. So this is where I can say, oh, I have two equations, two unknowns. It should be algebraically solvable. And I can do the rest of the algebra. I can take this, solve it for t final, plug it in here to be able to solve for V0. Um, so let me go through those steps quickly. So I'm just gonna do this quickly in my head. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, T final is equal to square root of minus two Y final over G. Don't let this minus sign scare you because this Y final is negative. The entire quantity under here is positive as we want it to be. Uh, plugging in here and then imagining solving for V0, what you should end up with is V0 is equal to D divided by square root of minus 2Y final over G. Um, let me plug this into from alpha. So distance was 45 meters divided by square root of minus 2 times and the uh, arrow hit. I converted that already into minus 0 0.343 meters, minus 0 0.3 meters, um, divided by G, or 9.8 meter per second squared. Uh, I like putting in units, especially when I'm doing calculation with Wolfram Alpha, because it also ends up doing my dimensional analysis for me. Uh, when it interprets my input correctly, it does the calculation correctly, the Final answer should be in the correct expected unit. If it's not, that might indicate a mistake in some of the algebra steps. This is the answer is 182 meters per second. Let's see. Yeah, that's it. So, um, so with the projectile motion, there's a great range of a variety of situations we can give you, um, and the. Once you master this kind of standard approach, then um, it kind of shouldn't matter what set of information we give you. If you have to work forward or backward, <laughs> um, that's a, it's like a, you know reciting alphabet backwards. <laughs> when you master the alphabet, then you you can recite it backwards. You don't have to sing the song <laughs> A B C D to um, <laughs> to be able to recite it. And um, the Projectile motion problem solving can be can be that way. There's a kind of a set way in which it occurs, and once you master it, it should seem all very mechanical, um, not very challenging, not very creative. 